Well, I'm done with this snow. Oh my gosh. I mean, what have we had? A whole two weeks of this nonsense it's and I'm ready to get out of here. Ridiculous. Yeah. This was almost going to be the winter that wasn't and then snow came. Now it is. So we're heading to Southern California. Yes. Pack we're, your bags. We're going down to the Peterson Automobile Museum. Ooh, in L.A. In L.A. Ah. And you know, wherever the Peterson was would be a good place to go because the Peterson Museum is possibly the best uh, automobile museum in America. It's my favorite. I haven't been there in a while. The last time I passed by there, it was under construction. It's been torn up for a long time, and yes. now it's all back together. So we've got to go see it. One of the great collections of automobiles mm. in America. So check this out, yes. the Peterson. Wow, check it out, the new Peterson. I haven't been in here for a while. Yeah, it looks different than the last time, doesn't it? It sure does. They've changed it a lot since they combined it with two other collections and completely rebuilt the building. The Peterson collection has been downsized a bit and then combined with the Meyer and the Mullen collections. Oh, wow. And they're adding new cars all the time. <laughs> Hey, it's Lightning McQueen! Isn't that great? The Petersons love to collect cars that were used in movies. Oh, this one's cool. And some of the new cars, these are some of the cars from the Mullen collection. Mm, carbon been, fiber. Isn't that neat? A carbon fiber McLaren. S McLarens are far and away my favorite supercars of all time. And these two are made entirely out of carbon fiber, even the interiors. That's right, we have a place right here in the valley that creates carbon fiber. That's Hexel, and our son-in-law works there. He does, Jeremy. And yes. they actually invented carbon fiber they right sure there. They did. And they built all the original carbon fiber formula cars there. That's pretty neat. No kidding. But now they just sell the carbon fiber to McLaren, and McLaren makes their own carbon fiber <sighs> yes. cars. There's two of them here outside Mullen's Design Studio, which is a new part of the museum as well. It seems that Mullen is on the board of directors for the Art Center in Pasadena, one of the premier schools of automotive design, and they've moved part of that program here to the museum, and they now have the Mullen Design Center right here in the Peterson Museum. And look, they still make prototypes out of plasticine. Wow, look at that. I figured they'd be using 3D printers, and they have 3D printers, but they still sculpt out of plasticine. The Petersons loved to collect motorcycles, and they bought out the collection of Steve McQueen. Oh my goodness, was that his Indian? It sure was. Wow. Wow, check it out, a Benz patent wagon. Oh my. Carl Benz built this thing in 1886, and they sold quite a few of them. They manufactured it there. It's the world's first production automobile, and they've got one of them here at the Peterson. Isn't they that do. neat? Wow. Benz is, of course, best known for being the second half of Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> <laughs> In the early, early days, these things were all being built by experimenters and mechanics and people with an interest. But Carl Benz here had the idea to build them and manufacture them and actually sell them. So he came up with the patent wagon here in 1886 and started selling them. Carl was able to patent the thing, which was no mean feat. They weren't really giving out patents for automobiles, but now he had to sell them. So they came up with a publicity stunt where Carl's wife, Bertha, here took the car, ostensibly without Carl's permission, and drove it to her hometown, proving that these were so reliable that anyone could take one out on the open road and feel perfectly safe. In 1986, Mercedes-Benz produced 100 reproductions of the cars. Wow, how neat! Isn't that cool? And at about that same time, Franklin Mint offered it as a die cast, and that's going to be featured in the Collector's Attic this week. Along with the world's first motorcycle, the Daimler Rett Wagon from 1885. 
This was really the first vehicle of any kind powered by an internal combustion engine had been built by Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach. They of course later partnered with Carl Benz to form Daimler Benz and produce the automobile, the Mercedes Benz. And Franklin Mint has also produced a copy of the Rhett Wagon, which will also be in the collector's attic. Well, at any rate, the Petersons loved motorcycles, and so they collected quite a few historic early motorcycles, as well as just all kinds of motorcycles throughout the ages. What is that gizmo? That thing is called a motor wheel. Oh. And a couple of companies offered motor wheels so that you could just motorize any old thing you wanted to in the early days. Now this is also made by Smith, and it's the 1900 Smith runabout, and it's important to Los Angeles because it was the first automobile built in Los Angeles, just a few miles here from the Peterson Museum. Anyway, Smith and Briggs and & Stratton, another company that built small motors back in the day, offered these motor wheels. And you could just hang those on any old contrivance that you wanted to, uh, typically a bicycle, but a lot of them would be attached to some sort of wagon or cart. Briggs and Stratton even offered their own little cart to hang it on called the Red Bug. Look at that, it's cute. Isn't that neat? We saw this thing up in Reno at mm -hmm. the Hera collection. Anyway, the real monster breakthrough in automotive designs happened here in 1909 when Henry Ford released the Model T. Wow. In 1909, you could get these in any color you wanted. Later on, you could get it in any color you wanted as long as it's black. <laughs> Here's a silly little known fact. The black pigment that they were using was gilsonite. Imagine that. From the Uinta Basin. <laughs> We've got that fun show on the Uinta Railway showing how they mined gilsonite. Anyway, here's a 194 Fabrique Nationale. Is that thing cool? That's just different, boy. Four-cylinder motorcycle, gutless as all get out, in spite of four cylinders, less than one horsepower. But that's the early days of motorcycles. But what a beautiful motorcycle. But if it was a two-wheeled contrivance, the Petersons wanted to buy one and collect it here in the museum. We could probably do an entire show just on the motorcycle collection if we wanted to. Predominantly American motorcycles, Harleys and Indians, but good grief, look at this collection. One of every kind. Just a little bit of everything. Oh man, blows my mind. We gotta go back. Yes. Okay, this is special and rare. I like it. It's a Ford, yes. <laughs> so of course we like it. But when Ford put out the GT40, they offered a street version. A lot of people don't know, they put out a street version of the Mark III oh Racer. My. Seven of them, and there's one of them right there. And there's a whole bunch of these really neat mid-century European designs. Some of them only look European. They sure do. That's actually an American car, a Bosley wow. with a with a Hemi in it. Oh my. So it goes like stink. It does like 160 miles an hour because it's a Hemi, but it looks more like a Ferrari. It sure does. And the Petersons love to collect American concept cars. Oh, I love concept cars. They're so neat. They've, they've uh, downsized that part of the collection, but they kept these three. This is a Dodge Storm, and it came with two bodies. Oh, my. So if you went racing, you pulled off the street body and stuck on the racing body. <laughs> I have no idea how that works. Double car garage. <laughs> I guess it, it doesn't work because there's the one and only one that they ever built right there. They, of course, have both bodies here, but they just display it with the street version. Now this thing looks like a Studebaker. It sure does. Uh, since it was designed by Gia, that makes sense because Gia was designing the mid-century Studebakers. Oh, 
I see. But the Studs all looked like Italian cars mm -hmm. uh, because they were designed by an Italian company. And the Petersons fell in love with hot rods. Of course. Of course. And you're not going to collect hot rods unless you collect the most historically important hot rods. So these are all hot rods that were featured in the magazines in the early 1950s and were, in fact, part of the National Roadster Show, winners from the National Roadster Show. The award there was called the Amber. But these were the prototype that started a whole generation. These are deuce coupes, mm -hmm. but some of these are also tea buckets. But these are the very first hot rods created in 1950, and all of them have incredible history. Oh, look at the flathead. Isn't that neat? The Ford flathead. Oh, nothing sounds better. Oh, they're so cool. And the ultimate hot rod engine. This is one cool little gallery here, the Hot Rod Gallery. And the very last cars that the Petersons were collecting were lowriders. Oh, look at the Impala. <laughs> look at oh, the my Impala. Goodness. And in 2000, the Petersons started collecting lowriders. Oh, wow. Those are so cool. They're neat. Another Los Angeles car movement like the Hot Rod. And so the Petersons felt like that was something that they wanted to collect. Yes, the cultural difference type car. Indeed, and very much a part of Los Angeles car culture. The new Peterson Museum is, of course, a combination of three major collections. The Peterson Collection, the Mullen Collection, and the Meyer Collections. There's sure a lot of different cars here than the last time I was here. Some new, some different. That's right. I mean, they've had to downsize the Peterson collection to make room for these other collections. But the new Peterson would have to be seen as one of the world's great automobile collections. This is really a treasure here in Los Angeles. So this week we're just focusing on the Peterson collection, what's left of that here. And then we're going to go on to the Mullen and the Meyer collections. When I was a kid, I wanted one of these. Well, who didn't? <laughs> Gee, the, the Toyota GT2000. Oh, my. Just an absolutely amazing car. Really influenced automotive design. The Petersons love to collect cars that were used in motion pictures. They sure do. Check out this collection. This is really, really neat. Now, this, this weird motorcycle thing here is actually a camera car. The camera mounts to the motorcycle and the camera operator and director ride in the seats. This is a beautiful Duesenberg. Oh, I love the color. I just love Duesenbergs. This is sort of a garden variety Duesenberg, but it's here in the movie gallery because it was used in the motion picture, The Great Gadsby. But by anybody's measure, you'd have to say the Duesenberg is a great American classic. Here's the Volkswagen bus from Little Miss Sunshine and the Ferrari 308 from Magnum P.I. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a chance to buy that car oh, once. Oh, you did? <laughs> I, I didn't have any money. Oh. <laughs> but Steve Harris had it. And of course, Herbie. Oh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Ah, Christine. That is a neat, neat car. You have sort of a personal connection. We had a Christine when I was a kid, but it was white. Yeah, and I don't think it had the soul no. of Christine. This is one of many Christines. They had to build about a dozen of them for the movie. Thelma and Louise's Square T-Bird. I love those. They are so neat, and I was so disappointed in the end of that movie. I couldn't believe that they killed off the stars, but did they have to kill the car, too? <laughs> <laughs> of course, the, the car looks pretty good here because they didn't really drive this one off a cliff. That was a stunt car that drove off this cliff right here. Thelma and Louise Point near Moab. So when we were at the Moab car show, we had to pay homage to that and visit the spot. So I'm a little happier with the movie now that I can see that the car is okay. <laughs> 
And check this out. That looks familiar. <laughs> it's the Bat Cycle from the 1960s. This wasn't actually used in the TV series. They made a feature film back then of the same uh, Adam West Batman series. And they rode around in this Bat Cycle built by Corky's Customs oh, of boy. Los Angeles. <laughs> The sidecar here is detachable and can drive on its own. Oh, isn't that cool? <laughs> isn't that neat? And the Batmobile from my favorite Batman movie, The Dark Knight. Oh, I love that version. Oh, uh, Tim Burton is the best director, and that's the best Batman movie, I think. I was so inspired by this car that when I decided to create my own superhero, Bat Fink, I decided to uh, put him in a in a modification <laughs> of of that particular Batmobile, but it's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful car. Here again, they built quite a few of them, but this is one of the hero cars. And the Bat Cycle from the same movie, The Dark Knight. I love that motorcycle. Look at that. Isn't it neat the way they wore the tire down to oh. make it look like it's got miles they on it? They drove hard with they, that. They drove it hard and put it away wet. Oh, that is just cool. And one of the most famous movie cars of all time, the DeLorean Time Machine from the Back to the Future series. I loved it. Our good friend, who's been featured a few times here on the channel, Don Maloof, was the sound designer on these three films. Imagine that! <laughs> so he's the one who came up with the sound for this amazing vehicle. But isn't it cool to see this thing here in the Peterson? It gets more attention than any other car in the entire museum, and that's saying something. After all these years, I see that the flux capacitor is still capacitating flux, and it's still set to go back to the future. Yes. Well, in the upcoming two shows, we're going to look at the rest of the collection, which includes the world's most expensive car. Oh, my. Well, that's the Peterson. Wow. And now it's back to snow with us. Yeah, well, there's oh, a little rain well. down there, though. Yeah, mud and snow yeah, and rain. It's, yeah, that's it's Southern uh, California yeah. in the winter, but Indeed. better winters than, than, than here. Than this. <laughs> It rains. They say it never rains in L.A., but it does. Oh, it does indeed. Yeah. <laughs> it rains a lot there. Yes. Anyway, uh, that was really, really fun. And we're actually going to be back to the Peterson over a couple of different shows. Yeah. Uh, watch for those. We're going to visit the Bugatti Gallery, yeah. where they have just Bugattis. Yes. And the Ferrari Gallery, where they have just Ferraris. Mm -hmm. So that's a couple of upcoming shows back there at yes. the Peterson. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe, because then you'll be notified of stuff if you click on your little uh, notification bell after you subscribe. And then you can get text messages or emails. I don't think they actually offer a personalized phone call, hmm. but that would be nice. You know? Yeah, it would. But anyway, they don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> The easy way to subscribe is to click on the infamous blue button, zoink, right there where it says subscribe, little finger it. If you don't see it, it's probably because your device, your phone or whatever doesn't support it. Oh, yeah. In which case, you'll have to just go directly to the channel and, mm -hmm. and subscribe that way. Yeah. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again with some more massive screwing around. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.